Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Hi guys, and this is Gaswish. We're not going to bother with any puns or jokes, we're just going to head straight to the nomenclature here. That's because it's really early in the morning. Uh-huh, and it's 2014. Mm, it's dark outside still. All right, so. We got to talk about writing ionic formulas today. Which we did touch on when we did the last unit. This is very true, because we talked about ions and how they form together. To make ionic compounds. To make ionic compounds. What we didn't talk about was that there's two types, right? That's true. Okay. Um, the basics, which is, this is a review, the formulas for ionic compounds have to have uh, a net charge of zero. Right. All compounds are not charged. Right. Otherwise, when you walked up and you touched salt, if it was charged, you'd you get, get a shock. <laughs> you get a shock. Right. Shocking experience. Uh, if the compound is ionic which that's what we're right. doing here. Yeah, that's basically what they are. Both the positive ions and the negative ions must be present. Right. Right. So you got to have cations and anions. And the number of cations and the number of anions must be such that, that the net charge is zero. So their charges have to cancel out. You have to have enough cations and anions where the charges cancel. That's exactly what this last statement says. Yeah. It's a very nice diagram. Uh, so you take a sodium atom and you make it lose an electron to become an ion. Which takes Yep. And the chlorine ion takes on that extra, I'm sorry, the chlorine atom takes on that extra electron to become an ion also. So you get two charged entities. And there's an electrostatic attraction between these two charged entities. I like this picture because we did this last unit also. And this actually shows that there's an explanation of positive one ion and a negative one ion. The net charge is zero. zero. Okay. All right. That's an example. Mm, yeah. All right. Write okay. the formula for the following simple ionic compounds. All right. Uh, it should be simple. It says they're simple. So the magnesium ion and the phosphide ion, right? Yeah. All right. So Mg with a 2 plus charge. P minus 3. 3 minus. 3 minus. Ooh. Mm. Let's see. Need three magnesiums and two phosphides. Right, because if you've got three magnesiums, then the total of the ch positive charges is positive six. Right. Uh, if you have two phosphides, you have a total of six negative. Right. Six positive plus six negative gives me no charge. Yeah. The right way to write the formula would be only to include the, the right. subscripts. Yeah. So we need three magnesiums and two phosphides. So it would be Mg3P2. Awesome. All right. Now, uh, as far as a potassium ion and a sulfide ion. K1 plus. K1 plus. And S2 minus. This one's a little bit easier, right? Yeah, very easy. You because need two we potassiums. need two potassiums. And just erase these. All right. There's the formula. And you know it's an ionic compound because they're both ions. One's a cation, one's an anion. Correct. But we don't need to show that they're ions when mm -hmm. we write the formula. It's understood. When you write individual ions, that's a different story. Maybe we just do one more here, huh? I think so. I think they got it. We did it last unit. All right. So I think that the aluminum and the oxide ion are probably the, tough, the toughest pair that we've got here. So Yeah, that's a good one. Aluminum. Al3 plus. It is a metal. 2 minus. It's oxide. This is kind of like the magnesium and the phosphide, isn't it? Yes, it is. So we're going to go with 2 and 3 here. And we're just going to go ahead and erase the charges. So that's how we write formulas. That's the formulas. Two elements consisting of a cation, which is usually a metal, usually, mm -hmm. and an anion, a non-metal or a polyatomic anion. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay. polyatomic anion, what's we, that? We've been studying those since Friday last week, yeah? Yep, so the they wrote them out after the test. To name these compounds, we simply name the ions. It's two types. Type 1 compounds. The metal present forms only one type of cation, monovalent. Type 2 compounds. The metal present can form two or more cations that have different charges, multivalent. Okay, so the main group elements are type 1s. Right. The main group elements are type 1s. But... We talked about the transition metals being kind of funny in predicting their charges right. when we talked about periodic trends. Yeah, we've kind of stayed away from the transition metals. Well, now we're going to delve right into them. And that's the reason why we're staying away from them is because they form multiple charges. They're, so they're not as easily predictable. Yeah. Oh, six. Yeah. 
Man, talk about personality. <laughs> All right. So for type 1 binary ionic compounds, which are going to be the main group elements. Right. Number 1 and 2. Right. Um, that, that's what it says here. Oh, hey, there's some exceptions there. Zinc, cadmium, silver, and aluminum. Well, aluminum is a main group element. Right. right? Well, they fall in the transition metals category, but they only have one charge. Oh, okay. Zinc and cadmium are always positive two. Correct. And and silver plus one. Silver is always one plus? Yeah, okay. one plus. All right. Okay. So the rules for naming these things, the cation is always first, the anion is always second. Uh, so positives come first, right? Uh, a simple cation takes its name from the name of the element. So, and a simple anion takes the root of its name and adds an IDE ending. Right. So, instead of saying oxygen, I would say oxide. Oxide, instead flora, of, yep. Right, fluorine, I'd say fluoride. Okay, we, I think we talked about that. Yeah, we've too. done this. Now, notice the term monatomic. Monatomic means it's a single element that turns into an ion off the periodic table. Because that's going to be important because you're going to have to be able to distinguish whether it's monatomic or polyatomic. Polyatomics will come along. Right. Uh, so, and then we just write the name, combining the two names of the ions, the cation and the anion with the IDE ending. Correct. And the cation is always first. Whether it's in the formula or the name, the cation is always first. You always put your positive foot forward. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, name the following. Ooh, hey, check that out. Number one. That looked to me like potassium. And since it's the cation, I don't need to do anything to its name. And the second one is iodine, but we're going to change the name, right? Right. Iodine is the neutral atom. Iodide is the ion. Right. So we're going to call it potassium iodide. Yep. All right. That like seems that. simple enough. Let's try out another one. You, you, you. Uh, cation is calcium. Ooh, that's not carbon? No. And the anion is monatomic anion sulfur, so sulfide. Sulfide. So I would call this calcium sulfide. Sulfide, yep. Okay. Probably right, one more. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh, cesium. Ooh, cesium. And bromine would turn into bromide. Bromide. This is way too easy, Mrs. G. Yeah, this is pretty simple. So if it's a main group elements or it's aluminum, zinc, cadmium, or silver, I just go ahead and give the name of the cation and change the anion to have an IDE ending. Correct. And I'm done. Yep. Good. Yeah. Oh, I had type ones down so well. Now you're telling me there's a type two? Type two. So type twos aren't much harder. They use the same rules as the type ones. There's just one small additional change. So the problem is, is that many of the metals are multivalent, the transition metals. Correct which means they can form more than one type of cation. Um, most of the transition metal group, including tin, lead, and bismuth, which technically is not in that transition metal block, right. but they are multivalent. Okay. Um, so those guys all form uh, more than one type of cation. Meaning they can have more than one charge. Okay. Right. Um, and it does not include silver, zinc, and cadmium. We, we've said that already. We've said that already, it, It's yeah. almost like we're getting repetitious right. and periodic in yeah. what we're saying here. So something like iron can have two charges, right? Correct. Iron can be a two, two or a three charge, right. a two positive or a three positive right. charge. Right, copper can be one plus and a two plus. Right. So the fact that they lose electrons is the same. But it's they, just they have a variety of electrons they can lose. Here's some more examples. It's like iron is a three. And iron is a two. Right. Um, copper is a two. Copper is a one. Cobalt can form multiple charges. Mm. In. Now, we shouldn't write these down, right? Mm. There's. What the charge is going to be. Right. So check this out. This is pretty easy. You don't need to write these down because the three plus is represented by right. the three charge. I mean, it's going to be pluses because they're all metals. The two plus is the two charge. Right. Right. Correct. And this is the, even if I go down here to the hardest one, four for lead. Hey, check that out. Roman numeral Roman four is four. IV, right? And if you're a fan of the Rocky films, you already know what Roman numeral four is. Yeah. The hardest two are mercury. Right? Yeah, these two are a little odd. You may want to write these down in big, bold letters. And maybe even make a flashcard of the mercury one because they are odd. Yeah. Notice mercury two is just a single mercury atom with a two charge. 
but mercury one is two mercury atoms that have a total charge of positive yeah. two. If I was to take one of those mercuries, it would have a charge of one. That's correct. But this mercury is two. always paired up. Mercury one is always paired with another mercury one. All right, so here's an example, right? Right, an example. So we've got this example here. It is FeCl2. Which is great. In fact, you don't know how do we determine which ion, which... Which are the irons that it uses. Which iron ion it uses to make that compound. Well, this isn't too hard because the anion is always known. The anion we know is one negative, right? Right. And there's two of them. So that means that I've got a total of a two negative charge. It's the iron. The plus two. There's only one iron. So that must mean, yeah, that it's the plus two version of the iron because I need a two plus. So when I talk about FeCl2, when I call it, I don't want to just name it iron chloride, do I? No. I want to actually talk about which iron it is. So when we talk about it, we call it iron 2 chloride. Now notice the Roman numeral is not in the formula, it's in the name. Right. Okay. And it's not telling me how many irons it is, it's telling me the charge of the iron. So uh, here we got some examples here. We actually do a little mathematical work here, correct? Right. I, I usually show some mathematical work correct. when I do this. So of the two ions, I definitely know the anion charge is negative 1. All right. Good. Chloride's negative 1. That means it means the copper must be one plus. Right, because there's one of each. Right. So this is going to be called copper Roman numeral one chloride. Okay. And the place I'm getting that Roman numeral one from is the, is the charge of the copper. Correct. Not the substance charge, right? Right. Okay, so we got to do a little algebra. Let's see. One oxygen is a negative two. Okay. And there's three of them, so that's a negative six, right? Right, negative six. All right, so the total ion, uh, blah, 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 the total iron charge has to be plus six, and there's two of them. And there's two of them. So that means that's a three charge times two, a three positive charge times two gives me positive six. Right. So I'm going to write down iron three oxide. And again, that three is coming from right there. Okay. One more? Yeah. All right, so here we go here. Oh, here's one of those real mercury ones. This is one we don't actually have to do algebra for, I think. No. So oxygen is a negative two. Right. Well, it's, it, this one's easy. This one's easy because mercury, It's this is one we have to memorize, right? Right. Mercury, when it's by itself, is the two positive version. Right. Right. So I don't even have to do the math here, although it's nice to check it and make sure it's okay. Yeah. Because if it had been, this is going to be mercury, mercury two. two oxide. In order to have had mercury one oxide, mercury one always comes in pairs. Yeah. So it would have had to look like this. This would have been mercury one oxide, right? right? Oh, a nice little chart. Yeah, I like that. Binary compound, meaning two atoms bonded together. All right, so it's two atoms. So yes. Yes. All, All right. right. Metal is present, which right now we're doing which, ionic. Which so we're far, going in, yeah. Everything we've just done is right. yes. We're going into covalent shortly. But we will get to this eventually. Right. right. So, yeah. Does the metal form more than one cation? If that it's, means if it's group 1A and 2A and aluminum, zinc, cadmium, and silver, you're going to say yes to that. Is that correct? You're going to say no to that. Does the metal form more than one cation? No, it does not form more than oh, one cation. Oh, right, 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 right. So right. then that's type 1. That's the easy one. No Roman numerals. Just yeah. write out a name. That's right. Right? Yep. Otherwise, it's type 2, which means we need a Roman numeral in the name, but not in the formula. Correct. 